Hello again. Welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to MC Eternal. So, since the last episode, I did add this, just two drawers here for Insanium and uh, uh, Supremium. So, I don't really have much. I did add a Void Upgrade to this, but it's going to be a while before uh, it starts voiding any of those. And I have started eating Jaffa Cakes now because they're free. And I've got a uh, bunch more tier six seeds to add or six more tier six seeds to add to this but you can see it's actually if we're spreading these out rather quickly i have to say so it shouldn't be too much longer and we'll have an entire tier six field um and then once i do that i'll close this off and we'll work out here a little bit getting all of this cleaned up i think um but, oh, and uh, I haven't finished this floor yet. I've been working on something else. But uh, one thing to note, this, turning in this quest is horrible for starters. What is, uh, oh, debilitating seven. <laughs> okay. Um, I've been turning this in. I have 808 at the moment. And I found that the best way to do this is just, like, go ahead and pull these out till they start falling on the floor. And then just keep doing it until you have like hundreds lying on the floor. Then go in and uh, do that. And you can you can submit a bunch of times. I was doing like a couple hundred at a time. Um, I did pull out one of the storage upgrades out of this because we really don't need it. 512 is plenty. Um, honestly, here soon I'll probably pull that out and just have 32 at a time. Um, but I have been working down here. I did seal this off because I had a couple mobs sneak in while I was working. Luckily, no creepers. Um, but I have been working down here a little bit, and I've sorted these two rooms out. I actually just got these plugged up. Uh, this side just plugged up. This side has a bit more of a buffer. Basically, I just plugged this up too, and it was all backed up inside the cloches, and I finally got the drawers sorted and plugged up. Um, but I went ahead and made a few more seeds. So we currently have um, Skystone, seeds we have energetic alloy we have vibrant alloy which is actually a tier five easy enough to make at this point for us uh, we have glowstone we have pulsating iron silicon iron certus quartz nether quartz um, fluix dirt and fire and obsidian um, so all of these that'll be handy for us working on our ae2 system I was going to make emerald seeds as well, but there is no normal emerald seeds. There is, however, um, let me find it here. It's uh, It'll be the thermal foundation. We can make the emeraldus seeds, um, which we may end up doing before too long. But I don't know. Shipping bin works too. Um, and I did shift all of this. It's not plugged up with automation anymore. I went ahead and tore that down because we're going to be properly automating it today. Um, but I did move all this back in here just to get it out of the way for these rooms. Because I decided that coming down here and having 18 cloches that are just kind of power the expansion of AE2 is for the best. That way I'm not running out of glowstone and nether quartz. And the fire and dirt is for making sand, is what these two are for. Um, the obsidian, of course, for flux plugs. Then I decided to go ahead and do fluix. It's really not hard to craft. Um... But I figure, well, I'm already doing this, so might as well, <laughs> might as well go ahead and do that. So anyways, what we're going to be getting into today, uh, if we go ahead and switch over our quest to advanced science, we might finish out rubber chickens today as well. So yay, another challenge knocked out. Um, but we're going to start getting into the molecular assembler, probably get a wireless terminal as well, and really kind of start expanding our AE2 system. And the very first thing that I want is I want to get a proper controller uh, this right here which is going to take some pure fluix crystal sky stone and an engineering processor which actually before i get started on that let me go ahead and pull up the advanced inscriber from ae2 stuff i think i'd like to make this first and foremost so let me go ahead and get a couple engineering processors knocked out. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and get our advanced inscriber. So yay, there's that. And we'll just go ahead and set that up. And this one, 
We can actually put in like stacks at a time and it'll craft using those. So, um, and it will stack and everything, which is quite nice. Uh, lock can't be removed with automation, that's fine. Okay, so we've got that up and running. Then we're gonna turn our, our attention towards the ME controller. This right here. So we're gonna need some pure Fluix. And I actually forgot I had all this stuff in here. Like whenever I was making Fluix seeds, I mean Fluix, yeah, the other Fluix seeds, um, I didn't have all this stuff plugged up. So I had to remake it and I didn't realize I had all this in here. That's fine. We'll go ahead and throw these into there because we're gonna need pure Fluix to make the controller. And I'm also going to need some just standard Skystone blocks. I need a better way to smelt over here. Oh yeah, and I've got to run a shovel over to the Builder Man because I forgot he was requesting one earlier. Okay, there's that. Let me go ahead and pop this shovel over. Because I got all of his materials and everything in there. And then he was like, okay, I need a shovel. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll get that here in a minute. And then I totally forgot to grab it for him, so... I'll work on it. Request. Fulfill. There we go. So he can get back to work. He's got a lot of that space flattened out, but he still has a bit to go, as you can see. So, and it's about to be dark, so he's not going to work right now, but... So there's our pure Fluix. Then we'll go ahead and get our ME controller. There we go. And we can now remove the energy scepter and replace it the ME controller. How did I get another inscriber? Oh, that's right, because there's a bunch in there. Duh. <laughs> okay. Um, so what we're going to do, let's go ahead and turn our attention now. Now that we've got that, let's turn our attention towards basic. Um, oh, I need to set this to JEI synchronized. And what we're going to do is we are going to get ourselves a pattern terminal, first and foremost. So we are going to need a crafting terminal. And let me set it to JEI Synchronized Auto Keep. Um, the pattern terminal, let's see, we're going to need one of these. Then we're going to need one of these. Then we're going to need that. So there's that. And for right now, I'm just going to set this up. Oh, <laughs> I could put it on the bottom of that. That would work. Yeah, why not? We'll put it right there. Okay, this is just temporary, so. Um, so there's that. And then we're going to have to get ourselves some patterns as well uh, these right here so let's go ahead I'm gonna need some glowstone that is why I've got this because I was anticipating needing a lot of this so there we go there's two stacks of glowstone and then back to our patterns these and I'm already out of quartz glass wonderful wonderful stuff okay well the molecular assembler I'm going to need uh, crafting tables. Okay. And let's go ahead and make ourselves a stack of crafting tables. Easy enough. And we'll just toss that into there. And then we're going to need some quartz glass. Um, let me go ahead and get a stack of this stuff running real quick. Oh, it's so slow. <laughs> it's so slow. What do we need to make interfaces? Well, I mean, I'm sure it's default recipe. Yes, it is. Let's go ahead and get uh, one of these for now. And it looks like I'm out of iron. Let me go grab some more. Okay, so there's our quartz glass. There is our molecular assembler. And then um, I think for right now, until we get the things automated, we're going to go ahead and probably start off with... Um, Okay, well, one second. Got a quest completed here. We'll go ahead and grab that stuff. Magic bean. Awesome. Throw that in there. Okay. Um, let's see. 
I'm going to want more interfaces. I'm going to need more Fluix Dust, which is currently... I need to get some speed upgrades. Like, start upgrading this with kits. We'll probably start working towards that today. Let's go ahead and set up our ME interface. And... Um, Let's see, how do we want to do this? I'm going to go ahead and open up this room a bit. Um, let me turn on F7 so I can keep an eye on that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and open up this room just a bit. And we're going to set up our interface. Uh, let me get some Fluix cable real quick. And... We're just going to run this Fluix cable back like that for right now, just so we have channels kind of coursing through here. And then we're going to set that up. We're going to set up our molecular assembler here. And now we can set up our very first pattern, which our very first pattern will, of course, be patterns. So let's go ahead and teach it that and encode. And there we go. And we'll just drop that into there. And then, um, let's see, if we were to try to order this, it's going to say we're missing pure Sardis. Does it have to be pure Sardis for patterns? Maybe it does. No, it can be regular Sardis. Okay, so let me change this recipe. I want regular Sardis, not pure. So we'll just put that into there. Grab a piece of this Sardis, and we're going to say that is how you make it. And then we'll throw that back into there. I need an interface terminal also. What does it take to make an interface terminal? Basically, I just need an interface. Okay, I'll get one of those here in a little bit. Um, it's really useful for your system as it grows. Right now, it's not that important that we get it. Um, but if we click on blank pattern, it says no crafting CPUs are available. That's because we need to make ourselves a crafting CPU so um, we're gonna need a storage drive I'm gonna go ahead and start off with um, well let me see what I can do I might go for a honestly 4k is usually enough especially for this pack it's probably gonna be plenty so let's just go for a 4k what am I missing calculation processor okay let's go ahead and get those running and then, what about an interface? Can I make an interface now? Oh, that's right, I need those. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our 4K storage compartment component. Um, and I think that's going to be enough for us. So then what we'll do is make a crafting unit. I'm going to need another calculation processor. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, there we go. Whoops. Okay, so there's our crafting unit. We'll go ahead and grab that. Combine it with our 4K. There's our 4K crafting storage. And then we're also going to need... Well, I guess really... We could just plug this up for right now. Normally I go for the... Um, Co-processing units, but this will be okay for the time being. Like by itself so yeah let's just plug that up and let me move the advanced inscriber code because right now it's probably taking up channels because this is basically one or three channels coming off of the top and this would be one two three four channels coming off this side because basically everything that you plug up with AE2 requires what's called a channel and these Fluix cables transmit eight channels. Um, and the ME controller is basically putting off eight channels from each side, um, which we're going to get more into expanding out on channels, you know. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but we will get more into it. But then once we get into dense cable, of course, we can have 32 channels ran and then segments of eight channels coming off of that dense cable. But okay, so we've got that. Then... Let me, let me see. Can I, I should be able to order these now. Let me go ahead and order a pattern. 
How many of these can I order? One at the moment. Uh, that's fine. Let me go ahead. Well, first and foremost, it's taking like a million years to um, Invar. Okay, let me pop up. Um, it's taking like a million years to pulverize stuff at the moment, which is kind of what I'm waiting on because I need fluix dust and stuff. So let's just pop over. Let me go make some upgrades. Let me get that stuff going. But the next thing I want to automate is quartz glass. This right here, because I hate making this stuff as well. So there we go. And we'll just drop that into here. So we know how to make patterns and quartz glass at the moment. So then if we go to order a pattern, of course it's missing quartz. So there we go. Can I order three? No, I'm missing glass at the moment. We'll take care of that shortly. Go ahead and order two. And you can see it's dropping things into here and it's crafting them. I think it's already probably finished at this point. There's our patterns. And then what we're going to do is, um, can I teach you how to make cores? Annihilation cores. And uh, I actually don't want, I want just regular Sardis quartz for this. No, stop it. There. Just take regular nether quartz because making it into pure when you have basically infinite materials is just kind of a waste. A waste of processing. So, and with magical crops, it's not really needed to route everything through the crystal growth chamber. It's just extra steps that you just don't need. All right, so there's how to make our formation and annihilation cores. And then let me go ahead, let me pull that stuff out because it's taking way too long. I need fluix. And I also need to go smelt up. Let me get um, like a stack of these two. Let me go ahead and make up a bunch of sand. Okay, so I only need like a stack of this. Let me go, um, let me go smelt this up. I really don't have any glass made up. I've got a bit of mana glass, but, and I used a bit for making cloches, but I just don't have a whole lot. Okay, our invar is done, so let's go ahead and we'll start pouring this invar out. I'm actually starting to get low on diamonds now, too. So I need to push onto those seeds. They shouldn't be too hard to get. Um, quest completed. Okay, then we need uh, any kind of hardened glass silver gear and four electrum okay i'll have to say i can't remember if i have a bunch of hardened glass on here from uh loot boxes or not i'm going to say that i think i do not uh, but you can buy um you can buy diamonds in the shop so never mind <laughs> money is easy so throw the white on that so we can automate it. Let's go ahead and just apply the hardened upgrade kit for now. And that should speed things up a bit. Let me go ahead and toss this in. That's a little bit better. It's a little bit. And there's also upgrade augments that we could make as well. Um, okay, so now let's go ahead. Can I order some patterns now? Let me order like five. Yes, I can. And then can I order interfaces? Oh, I haven't taught it how to make interfaces. Let's do that. Let me grab um, these patterns here. This is always like the, we're starting A2, let's automate a lot of things type episode. So there's how you make interfaces. And we'll throw that into there. And then we'll go ahead and order ourselves two. Oh, I like it. Okay, let's do that, and then let's go ahead and teach it how to make molecular assemblers. So there's how you make that. We'll toss that in. Let's teach it how to make, um, well, acceleration cards. Well, let's go ahead and teach it how to make accelerate, or yeah, these cards first. So there's how you make that, and then... Um, Acceleration cards are, no, I want you to just use, okay, one second. 
want you to just use standard Fluix. Pure is four times when um, you want to save on resources. Magical Crops kind of defeats the purpose of saving on resources usually. So there's that. And then the other thing I want to go ahead and make is, um, let's see what all I've got in here. Oh, let's go ahead and teach you how to make uh, quartz fiber cable. So there's how you make that. Okay. And then let's go ahead and grab those interfaces that we ordered. And let's go ahead and order ourselves a molecular assembler. Which before long we're going to do kind of, it's kind of my standard go-to is doing four molecular assemblers around a single ME interface uh, and then eight across. Because basically each interface uses a channel. The molecular assemblers do not use a channel. And that way you have, once you have a lot of crafting co-processing units with your crafting storage, then you have really fast crafting of like really complex items, which I tend to like. It's usually once you get your AE2 system up and going, it's not hard to do that. And uh, it does help a lot. So kind of the way I envision this room long term is this is going to be the first of probably many crafting automation type rooms. So what, what I'm planning on is we're going to have an ME interface bay at the back end of this room. It's going to be glassed off, which so the glass is going to run about right here, let's say, through the room. And then the rest of this is going to be basically a machine bay where crafting happens, right? Um, so in this case, we're going to be using the pulverizer. Basically, we'll probably start, because right here, no, is that not right? Oh, it's because I didn't dig it back far enough. Right here is going to open up. It's going to be windowed. Um, just like on the other side. So there's going to be a window that runs along there. Um, so it's basically going to be this little section here that's machines. And they would run to here. Let me see. I'm trying to match up these rooms. Yeah, so we're basically just looking at like a four wide section here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the pulverizer. And so what we'll do is we'll put our interface setting. Let's see, let me remove. Let me remove some of these blocks so we can get back here. And basically we're going to have an interface that sets here. And let's go ahead. Can I make a wrench? Or even, I think, uh, if I recall, crescent hammer will work with uh, these. One second. I need 10. Okay, so there's that. And quest complete. Yeah, that'll work. So we'll just right click that to have it face off in this direction. That basically tells it that it only fades to the front. You know, it's not going to feed. If I put another machine right here, it's not going to feed that machine. It's only going to feed this one. So what we're going to do is say the back side here is for inputs and outputs. It's going to do everything. Auto output is enabled. And then I'm going to have to run some power over to this, which we're going to do wireless power before too long. Um, but for right now, uh, let's see. For right now, we're just going to do vibrant alloy because we can at this point. I went ahead and did this because I knew I'd want to be moving to this power. And it saves me a lot of materials um, to just go ahead and do this. There we go. There's 24. Advancement made. And we're just, for right now, we're just going to run the power... We're just going to run it down like this. And then we're going to grab some of our Fluix cable. Probably need to automate that. Let's go ahead. Since I already automated the quartz fiber cable, it's basically just a hop, skip, and a jump to do that. So let me order a pattern. I've got a bunch of iron up in the forge area, which I'll probably move down to here because we'll be doing all of our crafting and stuff probably through here um, in the very near future like after this episode probably okay so there's how you make fluix cable go ahead and toss that into there and then let me order some fluix there we go and then what we're going to do is we're basically just going to run this like that for right now um, eventually I think it's going to be like six and then six 
in a bay, basically. Um, probably automate thermal stuff in this room because that's probably going to be one of our first tech mods that we really hit for automation, I think. Just go ahead and get that because it's going to have really good machines for us. Okay, so since it's got the interface, what we're going to do is we are going to open up our pattern terminal. We're going to set this to processing pattern. And we're going to say that if you send Sardis Quartz Crystal, you're going to get Sardis Quartz Dust. And oh, let me order patterns. Let me order like five of these guys. So there's how you make that. And then the next pattern is going to be for Fluix. Makes Fluix Dust. There we go. And then, let's see, we'll drop that into there. Is there anything else I need to automate through the pulverizer for right now? Um, I guess I could do, just in case we find ourselves needing it, nether quartz dust. Well, I don't know which version it's going to give us, to be honest. Because there's like a bunch of them in this pack. It made crushed quartz. Okay. Advancement made, bejeweled. So that makes that. We'll go ahead and encode that. Okay, and normally at this point you'd automate silicon as well with sand, but um, we're not going to because, you know, we've got infinite silicon basically at this point. Okay, so there's that stuff. I want to teach it now how to make... Um, let me go ahead and t teach it how to make storage buses because these are going to be very vital to us. So it's basically like that. We're going to teach you how to make pistons and sticky pistons. So there's how you make a piston. Oh, and let's set it to or dictionary substitutions. We want to allow substitutions. And then sticky piston. Oh, let me get more patterns. It looks like, yeah, it sent some service over to get Crush because we need it for the Fluix glass. We're going to eat through this Fluix glass like crazy. We're probably going to go ahead and automate so that we can have Fluix glass like kept stocked because it does take a minute to craft it and we're going to be needing a lot of it. Or we just get the pulverizer up to where it's really, really fast and gets crafting co-processing units. Then it's not really an issue in truth. But okay, there is how to make storage buses start to finish. Awesome. And then let's go ahead and teach it how to make dense cable. Just a lot of teaching this thing how to make these different things. So we're going to need, we're going to need to first teach it how to make covered cable, which is, um, and I'm going to need more glass. So at this point, we might push on to like a redstone furnace, might be a good idea. I think, I mean, we could probably go on for the Supremium Furnace or the Ultimate Furnace. The thing is, then we have the Redstone Furnaces should just be a lot easier because these we have to pump in coal in one spot, items in another spot, and then we have to, um, you know, do all that mess. Go ahead and make me like four more patterns real quick. So we've got storage buses. Now I need to teach it how to make the dense cable for starters. So this is a little bit of a process. We're going to go ahead and leave or dictionary substitutions as on. So there's how you make that. Then I want to make this and I want to make this. And that's pretty much all of our cables right there, all of our base cables. Of course we can dye them and all that, which we will do. Um, let me go ahead and order another interface preemptively and another molecular assembler and we got network apprentice because now we have eight items, um, eight channels using devices on a network, which is one, two, three, the interface that's back there, then four for the crafting storage, five, six, seven, eight. Does this not use, I seem to think that the charger, the crystal growth chamber, and the advanced inscribers don't take channels. Now that I think about it, I don't think that they do. 
All right, so let's see. We got all that stuff automated. The next thing we need to automate is um, we need to do the rest of the buses. But for right now, I want to go ahead and get the storage components automated. So can I not do that with regular? I can do it with regular. Yeah, let's do that with regular. And the reason I don't have or dictionary substitutions allowed on these is because in a lot of cases you'll be maybe building up pure service for something and then the system will say oh i can use that and it just goes and uses that instead of you know crafting because we'll have plenty of that certus um, essence built up so i'd rather use that than take my pure service that takes a processing um, thing to do let's go ahead and order 10 more of these you'll notice i'm able to order larger amounts of these at a time without issue so as we get more and more automated so there's how you make those and then let's teach you how to make 16k me storage components and then lastly let's go ahead and teach you how to make 64k and does this have the like the really crazy ones i can't remember what mod that is that adds the really like yeah 250 extra sales too that adds the really crazy ones Will we ever need those in this pack? Probably not. I don't know. We'll see. And we do have a few quests completed. The Crescent Hammer. Oh, it was actually a quest for this. I didn't even realize. And then, um, because normally you'd make a Sardis Quartz wrench or a Nether Quartz wrench for that. And we got Splash Potion of Gravity from that quest. Okay. Um, and then I want to teach it how to make the thermal upgrades. Okay, so we've got quite a few things here. I want that on number of items. I've got the other one on number of items. So, um, Okay, so let's pull up Applied Energistics. Well, actually, let's go ahead and teach it how to make redstone furnaces. <laughs> Just because we can. So here's how you make a copper gear. Um, here's how you make a redstone reception coil. Here's how you make a machine frame. Here's how you make a copper gear. I mean a tin gear. Here's how you make bricks. And we'll teach you how to smelt clay in a minute. And here's how you make a redstone furnace. So there we go. <laughs> Now's when it gets fun. You can just say, oh, I want to I want to make this machine. Well, let me just teach my system to make it. And you pretty much don't make anything by hand anymore. Okay, so to do this, we're going to need eight bricks. We're going to need eight copper, a gold, and four pieces of tin. Okay, we should be all set for that. I just grabbed a bunch of materials to bring them over here and just dump them in. There we go. And redstone furnace. There we go. So we'll go ahead and order that. There, there we go. It's finished. And that completes a quest for us. Uh, if we look over at Thermal, Redstone Furnace, we got a Launcher Prototype. Induction Smelter. Oh, Pulverizer is right there. Okay, we do want an Induction Smelter also. Well, before I set this up, let's go ahead and get ourselves... Um, let's teach you how to make the upgrades. So hardened upgrade kit, there's how you make a bronze gear. There's how you make a hardened upgrade kit. And I'm going to need another, um, well, I'm actually going to need two interfaces. Logic, oh, I need to automate those. Well, I've not done that yet. Okay, that's next up on our agenda is automating our inscribers. For sure. Because that's going to cause a bit of an issue for us. So let me go ahead and get two interfaces. There's those. And then I'm going to want two molecular, or one molecular similar. And I'm actually going to want more interfaces, but that'll give us a starting point. Okay, so let's throw that in there. And then our redstone furnace is basically just going to go right... And you generally don't have to set a specific direction with these. I do. I know I talk about this in each series. I do. 
And that's just because I kind of have like OCD about my AE2 system. And I want it to make sure that no matter what, it's not going to try to plug into anything else. So we'll put that there. And we'll go ahead and say backside is inputs and outputs. Then let's go ahead and run that to there. Okay. So that's filling up. Let me go grab the Invar that's over there. And that way I can go ahead and order an upgrade. So there we go. And there we go. Okay, now I want to teach it a couple recipes for this. Uh, primarily, how to make glass. So we're going to set this to processing pattern. And we're going to say if you smelt sand, you're going to get glass. Oh, and let me get some patterns. Can I order 10 of these guys? Service quartz. Okay. We're going to be getting this stuff plugged up here pretty soon as well. And that way our system can make all this stuff without us having to go grab it. So go ahead and give me 10 patterns on the double. I think it's going to be, yeah, it's pulverizing. All right, let me give it a minute for that. Okay, so there we go. There's how to make glass. And we'll just throw that into there. And now one thing I want to get real quick is, an, uh, let me order, well, let me order th three. Missing logic processors. Of course I am. Can I order one interface? No, I can't. I'm actually getting dangerously low on gold. I don't have very much gold. I'm going to have to go out mining between episodes for sure. Um, I've got 13 gold. And I think that's all my gold right now. Oh, I got these though. Okay. So now I can get a few interfaces. So can I, can I manage three? Yeah, I can. Okay. So there we go. There's that. And what I want to do, I want to get uh, interface terminal. Uh, not that. This right here. Yeah, let me grab one of these. And we're just going to set this up. Um, well, I'll tell you what, for right now, we're going to put it right here. This is all this is all gonna get moved. This is eventually just gonna be a room for ME interfaces and some machine automations over here. So Okay, with this we can look and say like here's all of our molecular assemblers, there's our pulverizer, there's our redstone furnace, and we don't have to access the machines. We don't have to go behind them to access them uh, anymore to add recipes and remove recipes. So it's super, super useful. So what I want to do at this point is I would like to go ahead. I'd really like to automate the advanced inscriber, but I think I'm going to do it in this room over here. Can I order acceleration cards by chance? Diamonds. Ugh, I don't have a lot of those. I can buy them though. I think I need to do some more heavy mining here soon. Or just finish out um, like the AE2 and agriculture uh, quests. Like that one and that one, then we'll have Misco Agriculture Seeds. Oh, another thing I'd like to automate from is the flux plug stuff. Like, here's how you make Eye Vendor. Here's how you make flux cores. Here's how you make a flux block. Here's how you make a flux plug. Here's how you make a flux points. Um... And then we'll go ahead and teach it the basic flux storage. We are going to need to automate flux, which means we're going to have to go down to bedrock to automate that, but that's not a biggie. Basic flux storage. Yeah, let's just go ahead and throw all that into there. And then, um, let's see, add applied energistics. I've got room in there for like two more recipes. So let's go ahead and teach it how to make a crafting unit. And it should know how to make, I mean, it does know how to make these, but we're about to get to that. So there's how you make that, and then we'll teach it how to make, um, we'll probably just do like 4Ks, so there's how you make that. Okay. And then I'm still going to need to teach it how to make a crafting co-processing unit, uh, but I will do that. 
Okay, so at this point, what I need to do is I need to basically do a little bit of reorganizing on things, basically shift some of this out so we don't run out of channels because right now we have one, two, six channels. And really the ME drives don't need to be here. And I need to run some cables that are gonna go underneath the floor over to here, which is where we're gonna automate the advanced inscribers, the crystal growth chamber. And I don't know if we'll automate, to be honest, I don't know if we'll automate the charged stuff at this point because I mean it's going to show up in a lot of these recipes but I don't think there's much actually that takes charge service that will not take normal service I mean there's a couple things like the meteorite compass but it's generally not stuff that we're going to be needing a lot of um, I don't know we might automate the charger we'll see but I definitely want to automate some advanced inscribers so I'm going to go ahead and get like four more of these made. I think I'm going to go with five, maybe. Well, I don't know. I might go ahead and make this six that we made inscribers for. Go ahead and automate those and do single recipes. Probably what I'm going to do. So give me just a little bit. I'm going to get these upgraded and um, I think the advanced inscriber is not too bad. I'm going to have to make some engineering. I'm going to have to make some engineering processors. But aside from that, it's not a big deal. Oh, and those are diamonds. Ooh. I'm going to run out of diamonds, but I can buy them for 500. So yeah, let's just do that because money is of no consequence to us at the moment. So, but I am going to have to order some dense cable and then we'll talk about channels. Um, I'm going to have to get a bunch of wool basically, which is easy. So yeah, I'll be back in a, in just a little bit. Okay. And I just got to thinking, um, because we're going to need a lot of wool. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up some sheep seeds down here because these will be very important to our AE2 system. So let's go ahead. What we're going to do is instead of going out and farming these, we're going to go ahead and grab some zombie chunks because I have like a plethora of those things. Let's go ahead, get those smelting up real quick. And we're going to get tier one mob chunks from that. And it doubled. <laughs> awesome. And then what we're going to do, let's pop up. Let me go ahead and take these. And we're going to upgrade these to tier two mob chunks, which I actually have some tier two. They're slimes, but I don't want to use those because I am going to want slime seeds. Um, actually, well, actually... If I'm going to be making sticky pistons, I should probably go ahead and set these up. Either that or rice or something, but I think slime would be good. And then to make our sheep chunks, it's four wool per. So there's enough for one. Which, that's not a big deal. I've got some flax. I might, I might have some wool lying around. I'm not for sure. If not, I'll just have to go farm some, which isn't a big deal. But yeah, let's go ahead and make our slime seeds. So there's those. I do have some wool. Um, so I'm going to need 16 of that. We'll take our tier 2 mob chunks. Boom, there's our sheep chunks. And then boom, there's our sheep seeds. Okay, the seeds are super easy because like since they're untweaked, I mean every seed is just like get four of the material and presto you got it. So sheep seeds and slime seeds, we'll go ahead and throw those into there. And then I just have to wait for the essence to come out because I've got all these drawers locked. Um, so I'm going to need to slot some of that. There we go, there's sheep essence. And this stuff, nine of it will make six wool. So that's gonna make our lives a bit easier. Then our slime essence, eight slime balls for five. So we'll go ahead and slot those. Okay, so now as those build up, we'll be able to make our dense fluix. And one thing I wanna do really, really quick, let's go ahead and get ourselves a storage bus I'm actually going to want like two of these. Yeah, we're going to be missing wood, cobble, slime, logic processors. 
And let me go ahead and just order a bunch of Fluix. I'm probably going to need more than that, but we'll see. Okay, so there's a bit of Fluix. Let's go ahead and see about our storage bus. Okay, we've already got enough slime essence. Let's go ahead and make some slime balls. There we go. And then let me get a bunch of wood. Because we're going to need this stuff to make pistons. So, there we go. Okay, so now I should be able to order uh, one storage bus. And then with that, I'll be able to order one more. Middle click, middle mouse click to make more of something that you already have, by the way. If you did not know. And there's our Fluix. Okay, so what I want to do right now is I want to go ahead and plug these up. And I think the way that I'm going to do it is going to be... We can make... Um, of course, why can I not? Oh, you're in my way. There we go. Um, of course, we can make facades with AE2, but we're going to run this underneath the floor. And so what we'll do is we'll put our storage bus here. And then we're just going to run this through. And then once we get our dense cable made, this is going to plug into a dense cable line that's sitting over here because there's nothing else in those rooms that I'm going to want connected, I don't guess. So where are we at at the moment? We are over here. Cool. Okay. So that's probably... If we run it out to like say here, that's probably good. And then we would have a dense cable line that runs through to here because I'm not going to worry about running a dense cable line over here because it's literally storage bus here, storage bus here, and that's all that's plugging up in this area. That's it. So then what we're going to do is, I know I saved a spot somewhere over here. Let's pop into... Let's pop behind this one. Storage bus. I'm actually going to run out of Fluix. Let me go grab just a little bit more. Okay, there's 14. That's probably enough, maybe. So what we'll do is we'll go right underneath the floor here. Oh, it's doing that super fast. Super fast mining here. Yeah, it's not going to be enough. 14. But we're just going to plug this channel line into that one. Almost enough. So we'll just run that up. There we go. And then what we've got to do. Those two are plugged up together. But now I need dense cable. So let's see how our sheep essence is doing. We have 25. Let me grab that wool that's up here, too. So we're going to want as much wool as we can possibly get our hands on. There's 16. And so I want... Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the smart cable. Yeah, I'm still missing wool and glowstone, which that's easy. Okay, let me go ahead and throw some bone meal. All right, let me go ahead and throw some bone meal in this just to speed it up. Um, which I think it's got to finish running this down. So that'll take a second. I could go shear some sheep as well. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and figure out where we need to run this. So there's our dense cable line. And so we're just going to run this right underneath the floor. I'm not going to... Oh, that's where... <laughs> That's where that big hole used to be in our base. And this is probably going to get shifted a bit as time goes on, but we'll see. Honestly, for right now, until we get the resources built up to do this, I might just order Fluix. Because having this stuff plugged up is going to help us. Because that way I don't have to keep crafting things. So yeah, we'll just run it over as Fluix for now. Just across here. And then we can always upgrade later. That's perfectly fine. Usually I don't jump straight into dense cable anyways. I was just thinking I might be able to. 
But in all honesty, this has to get changed up so much. And we got to get into like super channel transfer. Which I always love doing. There we go. Boom. Okay, so now that our storage buses are plugged up, if we take a look here. Um, there we go. There's all of our essence that's in the system. And I'm probably going to have to make another storage drive. Yeah, pretty soon. Pretty soon indeed. Okay, let me run that across. Just kind of clean this floor up a little bit. I'm going to leave that open for the time being. And I'll leave that kind of open as well. Actually, there's going to be a block that goes up there. Okay, and one thing I want to do just really quick. I have to like shift underneath that. We're going to set the priority here to like a thousand. So this is going to be a higher priority than the ME drives. We want the stuff to go here. Okay, so let's just set it to 5,000. And we'll do the same thing over here. Priority 5,000. Because if I throw things back into the system, I want them to go to the drawers uh, where they belong. So, okay. And that's got all of that plugged up. Now I still need to plug up to upstairs, which we're going to run that whenever we run our dense cable up, we're going to run that up to here. That way we have like the dye essence and all um, available to us. And then I also have to run storage buses over to like the Inferium um, system so that we can you know, access that and all. But uh, yeah, I think this is a pretty good start. I've got uh, I've got some patterns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach it like, you know, if you need iron, just do that. There we go. And, um, oh yeah, and I'm like out of interfaces. Okay, so there's our molecular assembler. There we go. There's how you make iron. And then I'm going to go ahead and just order some patterns. And most of these, there's only really going to be one thing that we're making from them. But uh, like right now, for example, if I go to try to order patterns, like let's say I wanted 10 patterns, it says you don't have enough service. Well, now that we've got that in there, it's going to know how to make service. So there we go. And it can just pull from our essence now from our drawers and make stuff on its own. So it's got to make a bunch of like glass and stuff like that. We'll probably start keeping that stuff stocked here soon. So, um, but anyways, I know it's about wrapping up point for this episode. So we're actually going to wrap this one up here. Next episode, we're going to finish out our current AE2 work because I don't want to spend a ton of episodes in a row on AE2. You know, we're pretty much just automating and going through the kind of the general process. But next episode, we're going to start getting into dense cables. We're going to run some channels and you know continue kind of getting some things sorted out with our AE2 system and just making our lives a bit easier with AE2. We're going to get our inscribers automated for sure, I promise. Um, I kind of got sidetracked with other things that I think were kind of more important. It's not like we're eating through processors super crazy fast right now, um, but we will start to. And I want to get some dense cable ran and we'll probably get these machines, maybe between episodes I might start shifting these machines to you know, back a little bit further to kind of more permanent places is what I'm hoping. So my AE system might be disassembled somewhat at the start of next episode, but I'll start getting things kind of placed out where they need to go, hopefully. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, I'll see you guys then.